welcome to another edition of WP Engine Builders. My name is Nick Diego and I'm a developer advocate here at WP Engine. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to build interesting and advanced layouts using the columns block in WordPress. All right, let's get started. Now, before I begin, I always like to kind of do a review of my setup here today because that will allow you to, if you want, replicate the examples yourself. So I'm running a basically a stock version of WordPress using uh, local on my local machine, and it's version 6.1. We're also going to be using the Gutenberg plugin today. This just allows us to have a, the latest and greatest functionality that's in the editor. You technically don't need it. You can just use the stock version of WordPress 6.1. But being an educational channel and showcasing all the latest and greatest in WordPress, we like to use Gutenberg because it has some of those newer features that will be eventually coming in WordPress 6.2 in 2023. Now for a theme, we're going to be using the Frost theme. This is a theme developed internally here at WP Engine by the Developer Relations team. It's a block theme. It's designed to take advantage of all the new features in WordPress. And it's a great place to start learning on how to build, whether it's with columns or any other type of building technique. If you don't want to use Frost, you can also use the 2023 theme, which is another great block theme, or really any other block theme. You can use a classic theme if you like. However, class, classic themes need to opt into some of the new design tools and functionality. Um, so results may vary depending on the theme you're using. But everything we do today will be available in a block theme. So let's hop right in. And I just have a very basic page with some stock text. And what I want to do is I want to do a quick review of the columns block kind of from a beginner perspective. We'll go very quickly through this, but this will lay the foundation for some of the more advanced building tools that we'll see in a few minutes. So you're in the editor, you want to add some columns, you can use the slash command or use the inserter. There we go, we got some columns and you have some choices to pick from. Now, every website you probably go to, there's some layout on that site that's made up of columns or horizontal co content areas. Now columns can be super simple. You know, we can come over here, we can say, we only want maybe two columns and I can just copy and paste some text in here. And you could just have two columns of text, right? Very simple in implementation. We want to get a little bit more complicated than that today. But let me just build this out a little bit and show you some of the functionality that columns have and some of the tools that are available in columns. So a columns block is actually made up of multiple individual column blocks. And we can do some fun things, especially when we do multi-select. So we can select both of them. Perhaps we want to do a background of blue. Maybe we want the text to be white. So you can see we're already starting to configure the content that's inside of it. We can come down to dimensions. Maybe we want some padding there. There we go. Now let's clean up the text a little bit. This is kind of quite a bit of text. Uh, not what I'm looking for for my design here. Clean that up. Copy this over. And now let's add a heading to each. You know, maybe this is a little section for a little call to action set section. And we'll just do a, you know, some, a stock header paste that over, okay? And maybe we want a button too. Let's do a button. Okay, now one of the cool things you can do is I could copy this button over. This is not a columns uh, a technique. It's more just working within the editor. You can do some cool things where instead of copying that button over since they're the same, I can just duplicate this. And then I can come over here and I can delete the extra one. So that saves you some steps when you're trying to duplicate content across blocks especially column block. So a couple key pieces there. Multi-select is very useful if you want to change you know, styles across your columns. And then duplicating content uh, is also great too when you're trying to replicate those columns. So here, you, here we go. We have a nice little kind of call to action uh, set up here. Now I want to explore some of the layout settings. So on your column blocks, you can do things like align wide, which gives you a bit wider of a perspective. And you can also do things like aligning the, the columns themselves to top or bottom. And this can be useful when you do something like this, where you have a really tall uh, column and others are not tall. You can do something like this. 
And now you can align in the middle or you can align them at the bottom. So depending on the layout you're doing, so perhaps we had something, let's get rid of our content here in our first column. Maybe we want to do something that's an image, for example. Remove this. Let's add an image. We'll pick one from our library. We have a bunch of Mars images. And I don't want this padding anymore, so I'm going to come down here. I'm going to remove the padding. Now, we don't want any background, so we'll remove that. So now we have this little layout where it says images at the bottom. I don't know. Maybe you want to do something where the image is at the top or maybe the image is in the middle, right? You can do all this fun stuff and we can preview it on the front end. And there we go, now we have our image. So you can take this design really far. You can take the tools really far. So you have all these different tools for typography and you know, all the normal stuff that you see on a block. So if you have never played with columns of floor, rather than just watching me <laughs> manipulate a column, I encourage you to just hop in the editor insert some a columns block and just play around, see what you can make. Now, we're gonna leave kind of the basic manipulation uh, of columns block there. And now we're gonna jump into two examples that use a lot of the stuff that I just showed you, um, but maybe in a little bit more context about why you would wanna use a columns block in certain situations when maybe you wouldn't think of using a columns block or maybe it's a little bit more uh, advanced than just using it in the block editor. So let me start with, let me clear this out. And we're gonna take a look at the media and text block. This block has been in WordPress for a long time. And as the name suggests, it allows you to add media and content and text. So we could just uh, go to our media library, pick an image, and we could copy over some text, something like this. Let me clean this up a little bit. And let's add back a heading and maybe a button as well. You know, this is a great way to do a call to action. Clean up this text a little bit more. Okay, so that's a media and text block. Very handy, especially for new users, because as the name suggests, it gives you an op option to just add an image, tells you where to put your content, you're done. Now, why might you want to use a columns block instead? The reason is, is because the columns block, in addition to other blocks like the group, rows, and stacks, have some of the most design functionality available to them, much more than we have in the media and text block. The media and text block does give you some options. You can move things to the left or right. You can also stack on mobile, and you can also crop the image to fit the entire column. So these are some cool functionality, but it's very specific to this kind of media and text layout. One of the things that you can't do, for example, is I can't change the space between the image and the text. I can make the image bigger or smaller, but the space between here, I cannot change. Similarly, if I was to add a background, I can't change, let's make this white, I cannot change the space around the text. I can come down here, I can add some padding, but this is gonna add it to the entire media and text block. What if I wanted to have more control over the content area? You know, that's where we need to start using something a bit more advanced like the columns block. It's not gonna have some of these handy features that are very specific like stack on mobile or crop, but we can tackle that in other ways. So let's dive right in and instead build the same layout but using a columns block. So we're gonna do that now. Let's do columns. We want something like this. Now, again, it's a columns block. It's very basic, very plain. We need to add everything ourselves. So we'll add an image. Go to our media library. Now what we can do is we can just copy these blocks over. Okay. Now I want to make this columns block wide and we'll give it a blue background like that. And we'll give the text white. So we're pretty close, right? I mean, it's not exact, but we're pretty close. But let me show you how you have so much more control now in when you're working with columns. So 
at the individual column level, now I can control everything about this text area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by giving it some padding. Let's give it a let's keep the back let's give it a background of blue. But what we're going to do is we're going to remove the background on the column block itself. We'll add text white. Now you can see that with the columns block, you can control the distance between the image and the between both columns by using the block spacing. So this is a really handy tool. So any container block that has multiple blocks inside of it will have this block spacing functionality. And here we can set block spacing. We can make it none. So you can see they're right up against each other. We can make it really large. So all of all a sudden you can see how we can start to control how the different columns interact with one another. Now, you can get really fancy with this and you can of course open up and do pixels, you could do percentages, and you can also unlock this and do horizontal and vertical. We'll talk about that in one second. But let's go back and we'll set the spacing to zero because we, we've already added padding to the content area. We just want them to be right up against each other. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. We're gonna constrain this. We're, how we're gonna do this column, we'll make it 50%. We'll make this column 50%. And I'm going to make this text a little bit smaller. And there we go. Now, one of the things to note is that when I click on this column, I see this little plus sign and you see this space. This space is just in the editor. When we save this and we go look at the preview, the space is no longer there. Now, one of the things I don't love about this design so far is the fact that this content is at the top. Well, we can fix that. So we can set this content to be in the middle. And then we're going to go update, refresh. And now you can see that, oh, we have a problem here. The column didn't expand to the full height of this column with the image in it. Now, you might say, oh, this is a problem, right? But it kind of creates some interesting design opportunities where you can see this is kind of interesting. I got an image and it's kind of larger than the content area. So it really depends on what you're trying to do, but this is where you have all sorts of flexibility. So instead what I could have done is I could have backed this out. I could have gone back to my columns and I could have done very similar to what we do with the median text. We can set the padding to zero, update this, come back over here, give it a refresh, and now we have this layout. So what I did differently here is I applied the background to the columns block instead of the individual column and then it makes the entire background blue, and then I can adjust the text up and down. So in the column itself, I could send it to the bottom. Looks like this. Or of course, I could send it to the top. Looks like this. Now, this level of control, me just playing around right here, you do not have with this media and text block. Again, maybe you don't need that, but when you do, you really need something like the columns block to make that work for you. But the columns block can't do everything. And this is where as a developer, as a designer, you wanna be able to leverage additional CSS to do some subtle tweaks that the editor can't currently do. But it's actually very easy. So I wanted to show you what I mean by that. The big thing with the, the median text is the stack on mobile. So for over here, let me refresh and I inspect this and we do our mobile view. You can see that on mobile, the columns, let me zoom out a little bit, the columns automatically stack and they stack from left to right. So the furthest left column gets put on top and then you know they stack accordingly. The media and, tech also, media and text also has a stacking option, but you'll start to notice some kind of weirdness to it. See this, it's hard to see. Let me zoom in a little bit here. There we go. You can see how there's a space on the side and there's no space at the top. This is because we don't have control over the spacing around the content area. And we're kind of at the whim of a theme or WordPress to manage that for us. And in certain cases, it doesn't work very well. But look at my columns block. I didn't really do anything to it other than add padding around that second column and it already looks pretty good. But here's where the columns block kind of falls apart a little bit. 
What if I have my image on the right, something like this? We'll move this over to the right as well. Now, when I refresh, see how the median text kept that image on top? Whereas the columns block, because the image was second, put it on the bottom. This might be not be exactly what you want to have happen. And, but we can correct this really simple using what we're all familiar with if you're a web developer or designer, just simple CSS. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a very simple class to the Frost theme, the style sheet. And we're just going to apply a custom class under the advanced section for additional CSS classes. All right, so let's hop on over to the Frost theme files and we'll add that class. All right, so here we are in the Frost theme folder and I'm in the style.css file. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scroll to the bottom and you could do this in any theme, any block theme, any theme really. And I'm just gonna add a new class. We're gonna call it uh, mobile, mobile uh, reverse column direction. And we need to do flex direction, column reverse. So if we look at this column, the columns block, it's a flex container under the hood and it's displaying each column horizontally. Now what this CSS class is doing is it's saying reverse the direction of the column. So if we save now and we take this custom class, come on over and we add it to the columns block and we update. Now we refresh the page here. Now we have the image on the top. However, if we go to our desktop view here, but you can see that we have a problem because that class is being applied at all times and we only want it to apply on mobile. So we can fix this with a simple media query. So we'll head back on over to our style sheet. Now this is specific to Frost, but you could do whatever breakpoint your theme is using or create your own. Uh, here we have a breakpoint of 800 pixels, so I'm just gonna use that. And we need to change this over to max width. So now when we head back over and we give this a nice little refresh, now we have our image on the right, and then when we come down to mobile, we have the image above, because that flex direction is reversed. So while the ability to change the direction on mobile isn't available, in the editor, we can very easily do that with a little class. So this also becomes very handy because imagine I had some sort of layout that was like this, and maybe we want to change the image. Maybe we want to, this is a pretty common layout you see on, on websites that display, you know feature different options or feature different things. You kind of stagger uh, the layout back and forth. Down here on this one, we don't want the direction to be reversed because the image is already on the left. And we update this here. Let's just change the background color to make this a little bit more obvious when we're previewing it. We'll make that green. Update, come back over to our design. And you can see our columns, images on top for both. So the columns block compared to the media and text in this case, provides a lot more control both around the content area as well as with a little bit of CSS work classes, we can adjust the columns the way we want in mobile. I think that's a really powerful application of the columns block. And at the end of the day, it's pretty simple, right? It's just two columns, 50% each, content on the right or left, image on the right or left. And we handle the mobile responsiveness, which is just a simple class. Now we're gonna jump into something a bit more complicated and we're gonna jump into the site editor. So let's head on over there. All right, so here we are back on the WordPress admin screen. And if you're new to the site editor and a block theme, you can access it by going to appearance and then editor. What we're gonna to do today is we're going to create a new post template uh, that displays a sidebar. We're gonna use a columns block to do that. So here we have just a default post, and this is kind of what it looks like in Frost. And Frost is designed to be very simple because it wants you to explore and build on top of Frost. So very simple post layout. We want to make this a little bit more advanced with the column and with the sidebar. So here I am in the site editor. I'm going to come over here, I'm going to go to templates. 
Now I already created a demo. I'm just going to delete the demo and we're going to create it again. I'm going to click add new and we're going to create a custom template and we're going to do WPE column demo. How about WEP builders column demo? All right, so now we have just a, a blank template, basically blank with some predefined content and we want to embellish this and create a sidebar and we even want to create a fixed sidebar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into this post real quick and now that I have saved this template I can come over here and we can change this to WPE Builders Column Demo. Let me update this, go to Preview. We just want to set this up so any changes that we make in the editor, we can come over and take a look at what they look like in our post itself. So let's open our list view and I have a group. What I want to do is I want to start by adding a columns block. That's what we're doing here, right? And to set this up, I want to do something. I want to do a 30% column and a 70% column. Now I also want to make the distance between the columns a little bit more, a little bit larger. So we're going to go to block spacing again. This is going to change the distance between our columns. I'm going to set this to medium. Now I'm going to go into our group and I'm going to kind of look at the content that's in there. We have our post content and inside of this group we have a post title. I'm going to move the post title and the post content to the second column. So we'll take that, we'll move it into our second column. You can just do it this way. And we'll take our post content and we'll drop it here. We'll move it down. We don't need this group anymore. We don't need this group anymore. Now, when you're working within the site editor, a lot of times you need containers to apply layout. This goes a little bit beyond the context of this video. I'll include a link to it, another article that we prepared about layout and alignment in the WordPress block editor, which you can learn more about that. But what we need to do is we need to wrap this columns block in a group. And the reason for that is our group, we need to then uh, enable the, the layout functionality. When we do that, that's gonna give our columns this alignment option. And then we can do a then align wide. And we wanna align it wide so it matches up with our header and our footer. If we did not have this columns inside of the group, we go like this. Oops, I added it to the header. If we ungroup for a second, you can see this columns block no longer has the alignment options. Then when we group it, now it does. And we want it to be align wide. Okay. So let's save right now. Come back over to our, our post and we'll refresh. And you can see we're starting to get there. There's no sidebar. This content looks a little bit wonky, um, but we're, we're starting to get there. Let's come over to here. And what I want to do is I want to take this post content and I want it to justify it to the left. The reason this is happening this way is because, again, refer to the alignment article in the layout article, which I'll reference in the, in the show notes. Um, a layout, which is applied in your theme.json file, is getting applied to post content. In Frost, that width is 640 pixels, and that width is smaller than the width of this column. And because that width is smaller than the width of the column, which we can see here if we inspect, let's get out of here, you can see here that the width of the column is 740 pixels or 798 pixels and the width of the content is 640 because it's being constrained. In the post content block you can align the content to the left right or center because we have it center it's being aligned to the center of that column. We just want to align this to the left to make it look a little nicer. Now when we refresh our content is on the left. Now let's embellish this a little bit. Again, this is not column related, but it's just making this look a little nicer. We're gonna do a featured image. Save this. There we go, it's starting to look a little bit better. 
Now what I want to do is I want to build out that sidebar column. And it's going to work very similar to start adding blocks. Perhaps I want to do, oh, I don't know, how about a header? And we'll do, how about categories? Where we'll display the categories of our blog. We'll do category list. There we go. Maybe we want to show post count. Maybe we want to do a another heading. How about uh, want to learn more? Maybe this is a little call to action. Could do some text. Let's just see us steal some stock text here. Drop this in. Maybe we'll make it a little bit smaller. Maybe a button. Maybe this is a subscribe call to action. We can add a little arrow. There we go, that's looking good. And maybe we'll do one more call to action. And we'll do a cover block maybe. Let's do a image of Mars. These are all about more Mars. This can be a little call to action. We'll do steal some text. And maybe we'll do another button. There we go. And we'll make that button something like that. Remove this extra paragraph. Maybe we'll make the small. Center align it, center align our buttons. We'll make the cover block, oh, I don't know, maybe 260 pixels high. high. And then one of the other things that we could do is maybe we want to do margin. We'll set this to zero. Um, well, this is not a heading. Let's change this to a heading. There we go. Update. Now we go back to our life on Mars post. Now you can see that we have a little call to action here and we have some more content on the side. So we already have this nice little sidebar. One of the things that I would want to do is apply that uh, class that we just created that allows us to flip the direction. Because if I was to look on this on mobile, you know, all that sidebar is going to appear first, which is not ideal. So what we can do is we can come back over to the site editor, do the same thing that we did before, go to our columns. And we're going to go to advanced, paste that in there, save. Now we we'll refresh here. Now we can see that our content of our post appears first. And then at the bottom, we have that sidebar call to action information. Now, one of the last things I want to show you here is uh, how to create a sticky sidebar, which is kind of cool. Again, we'll need a custom class, but it's really easy to do. But the first thing I need to do before I create that class is I need to tidy up the sidebar a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, again, this is not really related to columns, but it just shows you some of the more advanced design tools that uh, you can use in WordPress. I wanna clean this up. I wanna make this maybe a little smaller. Maybe I wanna make, set the margin to, oops. Um, let's reset margin. We'll set margin only to the top. Now, if you've, familiar with block app, that's what's controlling the space between blocks, you'll know that um, block app is applied to margin top. So if we set margin top to zero, it's going to remove that space between blocks. We'll do small. And then for this, what I want to do is I actually want to group these because I can group that whole little call to action together. And then we can do something like block spacing and set that to small and also condense that a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect block, uh, group each little section. So I'm going to group the category heading and the category list just to kind of contain them together. And then in my column, what I want to do is I want to actually group all, all the pieces inside of the column together. So we'll group this. So now we have inside of our column, we have a group that contains all of the sidebar content. In my group, just to make it a little bit cleaner, I want to increase the block spacing, maybe to like medium. That's going to separate each little piece within our sidebar a little bit more. It makes it so we don't have to use space or blocks and that sort of thing. So let me come out here, give a little refresh. 
So now we've kind of tidied it up. Each kind of piece looks a little separate. Now we want to do a sticky header. Sorry, not a sticky header, sticky sidebar. The reason why we grouped the content is because we want this whole group, all the content in this uh, sidebar, to stick to the top of the page as the user scrolls until they get to the bottom. Unfortunately, we can't apply it directly to the column itself. We have to apply it to the items inside of it, but it's very easy to do. So what I'm gonna do is on this group here, is I'm gonna create a class called um, sticky column content. All right. Come, oh, I'll save this real quick. Come over to our style sheet again. And all we need to do is we need to do position, sticky. Now, I like to always add a little bit of top um, spacing just so things aren't all the way at the top of the browser window. So maybe we'll do 30 pixels. All right. Now let's come over here to our life on Mars. We'll re let's remove this so we're back to the full view. Now when I scroll, we have a sticky sidebar content. Look at that. Now the reason you don't see the 30 pixels is because of the WP Engine nav bar. If we turn over to our view, oh, I can't actually, let me turn this off. Um, do a little new incognito window, go here. Now you can see that it's stuck at the top there. And you can, you know, tailor the, tailor the styling as much as you want. But it shows you just how easy with a few, you know, very small amount of CSS customization, you can create these custom classes that combined with columns can do some pretty powerful things. Now again, let's take a quick peek at what this looks like on mobile, just to make sure everything looks good. Go down to our mobile device. You can see here that we have our content. All looking pretty good. So columns are incredibly powerful. These were actually, well, I called them advanced. These are actually pretty basic implementations of columns, just not standard columns of text or columns, columns of images or whatnot. But you can use columns, you know, we saw it in the block editor. We were displaying different call to actions and images and using them over the media and text block. Or you can really make use of them inside of the site editor to design the layout of an entire page template. So columns are incredibly powerful, and I encourage you to get, you know, try experimenting with them if you haven't already. All right, thanks so much for watching this video about how to use the columns block to build interesting layouts in WordPress. Again, my name is Nick Diego, and I'm a developer advocate here at WP Engine. If you're interested in more content about how to build with WordPress, especially some of this new block-related techniques, make sure to like and subscribe this video. Also, be sure to check out the WP Engine Builders website, where we have great articles on these topics. Link in the description below. Thanks so much, and have a great day.